Welcome to Startup Spotlight, the podcast where we dive into the startups that are shaping the future. Today, we have a very exciting topic here for you, which is agri-tech. How can startups and the power of innovation help us on a journey for better and more sustainable agricultural practices? And of course, I'm not here alone. We have two amazing startups here that are being accelerated now by Startup Bootcamp. We have Marwan from GrowSmart and Ayanda from Tenet to discuss exactly this topic. So I'm going to start with the introduction round. I'm going to ask you a little bit about what your startup does and what is your objective as a company, right? So let's start with Ayanda from Tenet. Hi, my name is Ayanda. Um, I'm from South Africa. I'm the co-founder of Tenet as well as the acting CTO right now. Um, Tenet exists uh, to help uh, traditional farmers transition uh, to regenerative agriculture. Um, and that's our vision, that regenerative agriculture becomes a global norm. Nice. Very good. Very, very good uh, as well. Description. Nice. Nice. Good to start. Good to start with that. Let's go to Marwan from GrowSmart. Hi, thank you for having me. So this is uh, Marwan Baslam. I'm the CEO and founder of GrowSmart. Uh, I have expertise in biotech, agritech, and smart farming. And GrowSmart basically are focusing to help farmers to increase production, to uh, enhance the nutraceutical and crops, and to reduce the inputs. Nice. I mean, we look at agriculture as a sector that is under a lot of pressure right now, especially on an environmental and on a sustainability element, right? How do you guys see the power that agritech has to improve the sustainability element on farming perhaps you want to start okay sure yeah so um nowadays we are i mean the agriculture are suffering many problem okay starting from the climate change for the chemical fertilizers yeah. and uh, many problems we are facing there so for that i do believe that innovation in the agri-food sector is something crucial right now and that's one of the reasons why gross Mars exists so we are one of these startup to in, to help uh, the agri-food sector to, to find solution to these agri-food uh, problems. But you're talking a lot about productivity, right? And when we talk about more output, does it also necessarily mean more, more, agri more, more agrotoxics, more pollution? What, what, how do you improve the productivity without creating a higher carbon footprint or more damage to the environment? Exactly. So very interesting question. Yeah. So this is the core of our startup, which we are developing kind of microbiome based uh, solutions and um, bioproduct transformation to help uh, increase the crops production without using or by reducing the chemical fertilizers. So in this sense, so we are reducing the use of any chemical fertilizers, reducing the carbon footprint and helping increase the production by biological solutions. Nice. And for regenerative agriculture, I mean, it is a buzzword, but not yeah. everybody fully understands what it means. Yeah. Can you let us know a little bit more about what does it mean in practice? Yeah, regenerative agriculture in practice means that <clears throat> we're working together with nature and not against nature as a starting point, right? So nature has a way of working um, microorganisms or organisms uh, to take care and nourish itself, nourish the soil. Um, and all organisms in the ecosystems that work well in yeah. order to make um, agriculture work. So uh, when we speak about regenerative agriculture, we speak about specific types of crops. Uh, we speak about pollinators. We speak about integration of livestock mm -hmm. uh, into farming and especially uh, non-synthetics. So we do not believe in synthetics at all in uh, our regenerative agriculture practices. So it's a way in which you have a relationship with nature and how you go about uh, agriculture. And why do you think that we haven't been able to, uh, as a society in general, of course, to introduce regenerative agriculture more often into our production cycles? Yeah, I think the nature of agriculture and how it has evolved over time to become uh, sort of monocrop, yeah. uh, monocrop dominated, as well as uh, excessive use of machinery, uh, trucks and etc. This, the the consequences have already been uh, stated, uh, yeah. right? Um, so, um, so we just want to go back, to be honest, uh, just go back to how uh, nature used to work and using technology, just to touch on technology you mentioned earlier, uh, technology is an alley in this regard, especially for us in terms of uh, using machine learning in order to understand better what type of relationships with crops and with, um, and with microorganisms actually create the perfect conditions for plants to thrive but as well as other living organisms 
And it goes then back to the question to you, like you spoke about using biomass and you using biological matter to improve the productivity as well. Where do you see that we went wrong? Like why did we not think about this before? Well, so um, I think this is starting from the, if we go a little bit back, starting from the industrial revolution, right? So yeah. since then, so the use of these um, chemical fertilizers, the cost of the use of this chemical fertilizer is way cheaper than the use of uh, biological solutions, right? Mm -hmm. So from the farmers or agribusiness point of view, so they are using, like they are going organically to these cheaper solutions instead of, of using the biological. So they are more thinking about like, I have to reduce the cost by using uh, chemical fertilizers, right? But they are not flipping the coins and thinking about the environmental and society, right? Yeah. And that's what we are facing right now. So by using that one, so we are facing now like the quality of the soils is, uh, decreasing the taste of fruits if you realize in the supermarket so we cannot taste the, the, the taste of the fruits no, nutritional the, value exactly I mean. the nutritional value basically here in the Netherlands there are like some values some 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 data it decreased by 90 percent yeah wow so for that what that's one of our um, objective of growth Mars so we are bringing solutions in order to improve these uh, mineral, this nutraceutical uh, value of crops mm -hmm. and also to increase the production while reducing the uh, cost and the inputs of chemical fertilizers. Yeah, it's a matter of, uh, we, we think about it as a matter of sustainability, but it's also a matter of public health, yeah. right? We need better food, we need to take care of the land, we need to take care of ourselves as, 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 as human beings. Yeah. And when we talk about being in the Netherlands, right, and we are in the Netherlands right now, they're visiting us here at our office, it's really fun. But also, I want to know a little bit, where are you guys active right now as a startup? Like, what's the market that you're active in? Sorry, yeah. Tenet. Yes, starting with us, we are now active in South America, in Peru. We work with a large uh, farmer collective there. Um, and this is a good starting place because um, I'm not sure if I mentioned Tenet, we are a farm to fork solution, which means we assist uh, farmers from the beginning uh, with transitioning to regenerative agriculture, assuming they were mo using monocropping, right? So mm -hmm. um, monoculture. So in this regard, um, yeah, we, we, we specialize in, in what this cooperatives in South America yeah. has already a large network and a large footprint of uh, willing farmers who want to engage. But the plan, of course, is to uh, head to Africa and also East Asia. I think it's interesting you mentioned South America because if we think about it, there are, of course, very large producers. Yeah. yeah. But familiar agric a familiar agriculture, family agriculture, or yes. family-owned farms, yeah. it, it's still such a huge deal in South America that exports yeah. a lot of the food we eat. Yeah. So uh, really absolutely. nice that you can tackle that. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, Antenet also focuses on small-scale farmers. Mm -hmm. uh, we work with small-scale farmers, but as well as large-scale uh, farmers. But in particular, the neglected ones are the actually from a thousand uh, square meters uh, um, uh, and above. So uh, we also working with really a lot of uh, family owned farms. We're going to go back to neglected very <laughs> soon because I think that's a super interesting topic. Yeah. But I'm also interested, of course, Grow Smart, which markets are active in right now? Right. So um, until now, Grow Smart is operating in South Korea. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we were incorporated in South Korea. So we basically work uh, hand in hand on the South Korean markets and um, the surround. I mean, the South is part of Asia because we have one of the uh, clients in uh, Sri Lanka, mm -hmm. okay? So one of the biggest producer of uh, crops in there. So, and um, lately we incorporated here in the uh, Netherlands. So in order to um, produce uh, our, and manufacture our solutions here in Netherlands and try to expand in, in Europe. At the same time, we have, uh, or we are planning to have a branch in North Africa. So that's when it's gonna be our door to the African markets. Nice. Yeah. I think it's, oh, well, it is interesting when you bring it up because we're going back to the neglected part. And I think it is so important to create solutions that are not just tackle, tackling, well, let's say, you know, the people that can already yeah. afford all these very modern uh, technologies and solutions. How do you see the impact for, well, indeed, the neglected areas or the areas that are right now not receiving the support that they need? Yeah, I mean, for us, this is at the core of what we do. Mm -hmm. uh, we we and it's also about community. You know, uh, we we call, because the value chain is is quite long to start. 
one of the challenges, for example, they face is where do you source organic seeds, for example, or clean yeah. seeds, right? And in these markets, they are flooded completely with seeds which are owned by um, um, uh, large corporates, which are not necessarily... We all know. We know the situation, right? So um, part of this is working with small-scale farmers who have been collecting uh, and kind of working towards and spreading spreading the knowledge and spreading the um, uh, and sharing uh, yeah. some seeds, for example, just with regards to inputs. Um, so for us, it's it's tapping into these types of communities uh, and having a lot of dialogue with them to understand really what these situations and uh, challenges they face, uh, and work and develop our product actually around servicing those. Nice. So you're now in the Netherlands, which is the European market, very saturated market. How do you plan to then have a competitive edge in Europe where you also had it as well in Asia? Right. Um, it's very flooded market, as you mentioned, in terms of biosimilant biologicals, but the majority of these are uh, targeting one kind of problems, which is like perhaps increasing is the fertilization, I'm going to say, okay, mm -hmm. increasing the production. Mm -hmm. However, our startup, we have like this niche market, which we focus in the nutritional value of crops. Yeah. So that's one I'm going to say. We are leader in this one, so we are uh, one of the innovative startups. We are focusing on these uh, nutritional value of crops, and then um, yeah, so that's what I think here in in in, in in Europe in general, it's something not yet uh, well addressed. Yeah. Now going to challenges, what are the biggest challenges you see of being a startup in the agri tech field that you wish like people? could either help you out more or that the system was a little bit different? Like, which challenges do you face that you're like, well, we, we need to get past that. We need to get over that. Let's start with Tenet. Yeah, Tenet, we we see ourselves as a Horizon 3 startup. What yeah. we've learned very well this week from Startup Bootcamp, uh, what Horizon <laughs> 3 means and the challenges that it comes with. So, of course, agriculture is a long-standing uh, industry, uh, and, uh, and and regenerative is really new. So, for us, um, making the use case that this is actually viable is one of the biggest challenges we are facing right now. Um, but also to our advantage, there is a lot of curiosity and urgency uh, to resolve some of these uh, long-standing challenges yeah. with conventional agriculture. So. So that's that's one thing, just challenge of proving the case uh, that this works and this can be scaled. Yeah, um, yeah and of course, uh, in the environment for startups right now, I think um, the market is very skeptical. So you have to really kind of prove uh, a revenue and get things rolling. Yeah. Um, so I think that's a little bit harsh for us, obviously, at this time uh, financially. Yeah. But we believe in our product and over time, um, the results will show. For sure, I think Horizon Three. The beauty of Horizon Three is you're writing the blueprint. You're drawing the you're drawing the plane while the plane is in the air already. Yeah. And 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 you need to be flying, and you need to have already collected the miles, yeah. and you need to be, you know, flying blue uh, premium member while the plane is not even uh, it's an idea. Exactly. But I think there is many many ways to get there, and I hope uh, I, we're we're doing a good job to getting you there as well. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> That's why we're happy to be here. Thank you. Nice. And how about Grow Smart? Right. Um, I'm going to resume the question. Maybe we have three main challenges, I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. So the first one may be technological, and then you can explain one by one later on. We have technological, economic, and strategic mm -hmm. challenges. So in terms of technological, so we are a biotech startup. Mm -hmm. So um, our solutions are um, um, based on R&D, research and development, and that's why it takes time. It takes a lot of knowledge to develop that, right? So um, yeah, so that's one maybe one of the challenges, but thanks to the expertise of our team members so we are overcoming that one so um yeah the second one which is um economic right so as small startup i'm gonna say so we need this kind of uh, investment in order to scale up our production in order to invest in our r d uh, facilities right and here i'm gonna mention that this is why we joined this uh, startup bootcamp so and we are so happy that we are here because it's one of um, the biggest and largest accelerators in Europe to help us um, fund uh, our startup. And the third big challenge you're going to say is strategic because we are based in, in South Korea. It's uh, an Asian market and the startup to go to another market. It takes time. It takes energy. Right. For that, like, again, uh, the collaboration with Startup Bootcamp 
allow us and help us a lot in order to incorporate here in the Netherlands. And thanks to the mentors and the and the awesome facilities we have here, so we can um, have uh, strategic um, uh, solutions here in Europe and uh, and uh, and Africa. Now, for everybody that's at home and is like, oh, I really want to build a startup in agri-tech. That's my dream. I love this field. What would you have to say to somebody that you know wants to do it, but it's perhaps a little bit afraid? What, what would be your advice? And it can also be, go with the fear. Huh? <laughs> Let's start again with Tenet. What would be your advice? Um, uh, yeah, of course, I would always say, do it. Uh, yeah, um, I would say, don't do it alone right uh try to have at least someone else who shares the passion and will go through or ride the storms with you yeah uh, right um but of course do not let that uh, deter you if you cannot find them mm -hmm. uh, i would say um it's it's a challenge uh take it on it's not something this is not you're gonna change your mind tomorrow right this yeah. is something that uh, makes sure um you're committed and you believe very strongly in your in your value proposition, um, and then the rest is just hard work and faith, I guess, uh, and a lot of networking. So yeah, I guess yeah, that would be my. I want a T-shirt with that: <laughs> hard work, faith, and a lot of networking. <laughs> I think we have Startup Bootcamp's next merch line: hard work, faith, and a lot of networking. I'm gonna use that. Thank you. Cool man. So now for Growth Smart, what would you have to say to a startup, to someone that wants to start a startup in the agriculture or agri-tech uh, field? Right. Um, from my point of view, I think the first point I do agree completely with uh, Tanis, what he said. So um, don't do it alone. So you have to be surrounded by team that you can collaborate in order to tackle the problem you have to, 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 to find solution for. Um, the second one is networking. So networking is very important in, in yeah. the startup uh, world. I think it's something um, um, crucial, I'm going to say. And uh, later on, work on something you know, right? So yeah. for instance, just if I take like my expertise, so you need some kind of background in order to, to find solution to something, right? Because you cannot just jump to agri-food like you are from other fields and okay, so I'm here and they want to run a startup, right? So. If you have a background of something, um, I think it's gonna help you to, to, to go in startup. And of course, there are like advices, but at the same time, there are um, affairs, as you, as you mentioned before. And I think the fears just can go with the time, with perseverance, and also with the networking, you can overcome all these challenges, yeah. Nice. Why though? Why did you start your startup and, and what motivates you to keep going every day through these challenges? Let's start with Tenet. I, mean, I, I, find, I think I found a good, a, good, a good flow. I always start with Tenet, but tell me. Yeah, I think okay. um, many reasons, but I'll just mention two. I mean, one is just um, at some point in time, you have, to, um, you have to take accountability for the situation the world finds itself in. And for me, it got to a point where I just couldn't, uh, uh, I couldn't, not face up to it and say, look, what are you doing? Um, and it's related to the second reason, which is um, I had I, I had a daughter um, and when she was born, I thought I, I it was difficult for me to go to work. You know, I thought like I leave her every day to go to work and I thought I need something to give me reason to say to her why I'm going to work and what I'm doing. So. Yeah, so that's kind of how it started. It became like, that's what I do. And nowadays I'm proud when she asks me, what are you doing, where are you going? I said, this is what I'm doing. This is the work I have to do. And so, um, yeah, so for me, it's very personal. Um, and of course, um, food, agri uh, food, agri tech, hunger, SDG2, uh, coming from South Africa and from Africa is, is, is something I always thought we have to find those solutions ourselves and cannot rely on others to really understand. So, so yeah. That's absolutely <laughs> Marwan, grow smart. Yeah, I'm gonna say that for me it's a very professional one. <laughs> so I explain. Um, before building my startup, I used to be a university professor. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm coming from the academia uh, background, um, and at that time I realized that what we are doing in the biotech field, it's uh, more um, applicable, right? Mm -hmm. So, and I'm always want to find the gap 
between the basic science and applied science, right? Yeah. So um, during my, my period when I was like teaching or I have like even my, my, my laboratory, so we used to have like breakthrough results and we publish them. But publishing is one thing and giving to the society is another thing, yeah. right? So that's what uh, motivates me that I have to go from this basic science to applied science. And that's one what motivated me to create this company, this startup. And I brought this knowledge and or all this uh, background to bring solutions to the society. So all mm -hmm. these what I do in the laboratory. So I brought them as products to help farmers and agribusinesses to improve the production, to improve the nutritional value and to give to the society, to the environment and to the planet. Yeah. Nice. Last question round a very short one for the people that are at home and they are listening to this and they're like, man, I want to do something to help. Right. I, I want to. What are the choices people can make? Is it is it contacting uh, their politicians? Is it contacting the government? Is it contacting large corporations? Is it making better choices at the supermarket? How can people do their part for a better, more sustainable agricultural uh, practice? Try to go. Sure. Yeah. Very. Um, very, very interesting question, right? And I'm gonna say, like, is it a reflectional question, right? So I think um, from the point of view population, right? If you're gonna say, I don't know if you're gonna divide them into just normal people or farmers and agribusinesses in this sense. So just they have to be aware of the the core of this of this podcast, which is sustainability, right? Sustainability is like um, finding something for now to, I mean, the outcomes for the, this the current situation, but we have to secure the needs for the next generation, right? And I think everyone has to be aware that uh, we have to to live right now, but at the same time, we have to think about the future generation, our kids, our, our, our grandchild, right? So from the agri-food uh, side, I'm gonna say, yeah, so the people, they have to be aware of what they are consuming, right? So we are here, so as a startup, to find solution to this one, so I hope the people can, can, can believe in us, and uh, yeah. And hopefully we're going to find solution for, for, for the people, planets and the environment. Yeah. Nice. Yes. So just, I would say people should just first do some introspection, you know, understand what, uh, what's close to them. What is important to you? Is it food? Is it, is it fashion? Is it, what is it? Right. Um, and then find out who's working in those spaces. Yeah. yeah inform yourself um and get in touch like we need lots of people we need lots of skills lots of we just sometimes need just support people to just come and talk to us and um and, and etc so i would say inform yourself know your core areas there's the sdgs just go and have a look at the sustainable development goals and see which ones are really close to you uh, and look who's doing what in your region in your area and uh, and just go support them. Um, and and we are around as tenant. We are always. We have also a volunteer program, so you can uh, get us on LinkedIn. Uh, and we have um, yeah. And so collaborate with us. We are always ready. And the, that is tenant T A N I T. Exactly correct. They can find you on LinkedIn. They can also find you where. You can find us on our website on tenant dot solutions. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, uh, other information we'll probably share on startup bootcamp and, and etc. And grow smart. Yeah, Marwan. grow smart as it pronounces like grow smart, yeah. right? So you can find us on LinkedIn and we are also on growsmart.bio. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for the two of you for joining us today. And thank you who joined from home for our episode of Startup Spotlight. If you like this episode, don't forget to share it with all your friends, with all your colleagues. And don't forget to keep following us. We are wherever you can find great podcasts. We are there. But also we're on startupbootcamp.org. We are on LinkedIn. We are on Instagram. We're on TikTok. Apparently we're not doing the dances just yet. But we are sharing some great startup content all over the internet. We are Startup Bootcamp and innovation will save the world. Thank you.